Do you have a grateful heart? Amen. It's to give thanks with a grateful heart. And that is something that we should consider each and every day. I know some of us probably do, but for those of us who don't, we should consider every morning when we get up to give thanks. Amen. Gratitude. Be grateful for what the Lord has done for you. You see, when you wake up every morning, somebody didn't. When you step out of bed every morning, somebody couldn't. And then when you walk through your kitchen uh, and decide what you're going to have for breakfast, somebody don't have a kitchen. Amen. And some people with a kitchen don't have anything to select for breakfast. So when we wake up in the morning, whatever condition we're in, give thanks. With a grateful heart, be grateful because of what he's done for you. He's given his son for you. And whether you believe it or not, or whether you know it or not, everything that he does is for you. Everything that he does is for you. So when he gave his son for us, it gave us the opportunity to live eternally. Now you may not have no money, but if you got Jesus, you're rich. Amen. You're rich. And if you have Jesus, you have life. You have life. So let the weak say I'm strong. Because in Christ, that's where you find your strength. And let the poor say I'm rich. Because they are rich in Christ when they found Jesus. These are things that we take for granted because they just happen. Every morning things work out the same and we just get up. We're not concerned with what it took to get us here. Without the death of Jesus Christ, we'd all be doomed. Just facts. Simple facts. So give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks. And truly be thankful. And when you are truly thankful, then you can express it and you can show it to others. Do you believe that God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for you? Yes. Do you believe that when he was buried, it was for you? When he rose, he rose for you. And now, right now, he is sitting on the right hand of the Father, interceding for you. Amen. Now, if you believe that in your heart and confess it with your mouth, the Bible says that you could be said no, or you might be said no. He said that you will be saved. You will be saved. Mark 11.22 says, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Having faith in God, you can overcome the world. For you can overcome the world with faith. Because faith is the victory that we have to overcome the world. That's our faith. That's our faith. And who is it that can overcome the world? It is he who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Let me share this. In the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. Verse 5, for Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. So, he said that if you are doing the Ten Commandments, Moses says that you have to live by them. You have to live by them. 
But the Ten Commandments pointed to the righteousness that you can only receive through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ ended the commandments. And the only way that you can receive salvation is through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. Jesus fulfilled the Ten Commandments so that the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. You cannot accomplish your goal through the Ten Commandments. You must live by faith. In the book of Romans again, chapter 10 again, verse 8, it says, But what saith it? The word is nigh to thee, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. There it is. There it is. Salvation is near to you. Salvation is accessible to you. Have you received it? Or should I say, have you said the words? Confessed it? I'm not talking about, oh yeah, I'm a Christian, or I, I love the Lord. No, I'm talking about the confession that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins, was buried, and rose again for my salvation. If you believe that, you shall be saved. If you believe that in your heart, you shall be saved. And then, if you believe that, then you will act upon that. You will change your way of life. You will change your activity. The scripture says that he who is in Christ is a new creature. All things have become new to him. All the old things passes away. But all things becomes new to him. He's a new creature. The book of Acts <coughs> was written because of the actions of the apostles. The apostles acted upon the belief that they had of Jesus Christ. And Jesus spoiled them. But in Acts chapter 1, before he ascended into heaven, he left them with a message. He says that you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you'll see, you can make me change subjects. I got in the middle of the street, I got to change it Because they could they could have it, the, the Holy Spirit, they could have it because they believed. <laughs> The Holy Spirit comes up on those who believe. Amen. So they could have it. They just couldn't keep it. You see, before the Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came upon you, and then it left. It was temporary. And it only came upon exceptional people. Everybody couldn't have it. Until after the Pentecost. After the Pentecost, the Holy Spirit became part of us. It began to dwell in us. So now we can have the Holy Spirit. So it is ours as a keeper. Listen to me now. It is ours as a keeper. We have the Holy Spirit. And what did the word say? That you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. 
And the disciples took that and set the world in a blaze. We are still operating in the whirlwind of the disciples because they acted upon what Jesus told them, that they had that power. But I like what Peter said. Peter said in Acts chapter 3, he said, that I have, give I thee. That I have, what he's saying is that I got something, I don't know what it is, but whatever it is I got, I'm going to give you some of it. And the man said, what? <laughs> Beautiful. But you have to visualize. See, Peter and John, on their way to the temple to pray in the afternoon, we know it was the afternoon because he said it was the ninth hour, three o'clock in the afternoon. So it was afternoon. And it says that the man was laid there daily to ask alms of those who were going into the temple. Now watch this. It says that when he saw Peter and John coming, he looked at them expecting something. Think about that. He looked at them expecting something. It says that he looked at them expecting something because that is not the way he looked at everybody. See, if he had looked at everybody like that, it would have made no sense to say it. But he had to say it. He looked at them different. He looked at them expecting something. So he must have turned that sad look at them, arms for the poor, arms for the poor. He must have been looking at them and said, arms for the poor, arms for the poor. Because he knew he was going to get something. He was expecting something. But watch what Peter did. Peter didn't know what he had, and we know he didn't know what he had because Peter responded to him, look at us. Well, a man was looking at him, otherwise he wouldn't have been to you. So he was looking at him. But what Peter was saying, evaluate us. Look at us. See who? Look at us. You probably have more money than we do because, you know, you're out here collecting nickels and dimes every day. And we've been walking with Jesus for three years and ain't earned a quarter. <laughs> My clothes is out of date. Our shoes are old. Look at us, he's saying. We got nothing. Else. But the Spirit of the Lord awakened him. And he realized that he did have something. Jesus had just told that a few days earlier. You will receive power after. So Peter realized now, oh, I got something. He said, silver and gold, I don't have no money, but what I do have, whatever that is, that I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, he gave his name and his address of Nazareth. Get up and walk. And it says that the man leaped up. I'm saying that when we operate in what we have, we have power because we have the Holy Spirit within us. So we are walking around like Peter and John was, because I'm sure John was over there with his mouth open. What's he talking about? We don't know what we have. We don't know what we have because we're not putting it into action. We're not accessing it, in other words. We're not using what we have. Because we don't know we got it. But the scripture is clear. It says that you will receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And we receive the Holy Spirit when we receive Christ. We ask the Christ to come into our lives. And be the Lord of my life. And the Bible says that when you make that statement and believe that Jesus comes into your heart. And Jesus says in John 14, he says that I and my Father will come and make our abode in you. Amen. Are, are you listening to me? Yes. We will come and make our abode in you. So they are here. See, we keep looking up and praying. He is here. Within us, salvation is near unto you, even in your mouth and in your heart. Amen. He is here. All we have to do is awaken him, access him, access him. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we operate in the faith that we have within. And we talk about this a lot. But you see, 
God has given each one of us a measure of faith. And even though we don't use the faith of the power of God, we use the faith that he gives us every morning. Otherwise, why would you go to your refrigerator and look in there expecting to get your milk out if you didn't think none was in there? I got faith. I believe that there's milk in my refrigerator. Because I put some in there. It may have been last month or so, but I, I put some in there. But you believe it. When you hit the light switch, you believe that the lights are going to come on. That's faith. You're operating in the faith that you have. So when you step out in the faith that God gives you, you will turn the world upside down because you will walk different. You see, Peter and John didn't look no different from anybody else, but they must have had a glide in their step when they was coming into that temple <laughs> to make the man look at them and expect something. These guys has got something. They're raggedy, shabby, and pretty rough around the edges, but they got something. You don't necessarily have to walk around and advertise. Yeah, I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. Look at my Bible. <laughs> If you are filled and if you are operating in the Spirit of God, then people will know who you are by the way you carry yourself. You will speak different. He who is in Christ is a new creature. All the old stuff passes away and everything becomes new. You're not going to walk the same anymore. You're not going to talk the same anymore. The people who know you are going to tell you that you're different from the way you used to be. What happened to you, child? I got a new plan and a new goal, and I'm headed in a different direction. And when you head off in that different direction, you got a little pep in your step. You're getting out there. You're going places. You see, people see you coming out of your places of worship or going into your places of worship. How you doing today? I'm here. <laughs> that doesn't inspire anybody. That, that, the, the, the lame man laying at the gate, he got to look at you and say, I don't even know if I should ask him for him. <laughs> He's in worse shape than me. <laughs> but when you're going with purpose, you got purpose when you're walking in the light of Christ. Because you're going into all the world. That's what Jesus said. When you receive that power, after you receive the Holy Ghost, then you'll be witness for me in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, and even to the ends of the earth. You see, you're going somewhere. You are going somewhere. And people want to deal with people who are going somewhere. I'm talking about operating in the faith that you have. Each one of us has been given a measure of faith. But if we don't use it, it lays dormant. And when we feed upon the Word of God, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And that's why you're here today. To refuel, to, to add a little kindle to that fire, that spark that was already set within you. You don't get up and come out here just because, well, you know, that's a good looking dude. I'm going up there to watch him. No, you come here to get the word of God. You come to get fed, you see. This is a spiritual smorgasbord. This is a spiritual hospital. This is a place where you come to again refuel so that when you head out that door, you have that pep in your step because you are excited about life because look what he's done for me. Got me up this morning, took me out to a place of worship. I got to fellowship with all of the people that I know and love. I've been blessed already. So now, let me bless somebody else with some of the stuff that I got. See, Peter and John didn't have no money, but what they did have, they gave. 
And what they gave was more valuable than the quarters that the man would have had if they gave him a nickel or a dime. Amen. They gave him hope. They gave him life. They gave him inspiration. So he was able now to function on his own. I'm talking about giving of yourself. You don't have to have a lot. But you're rich in Christ so you can save the life of many. Somebody created a TV series, The Walking Dead. It's true. It's true. Those who are without Christ are dead. And they're walking by us every day. But what do we have? We have salvation. We can save them. We can bring them back to life by introducing them to Jesus and exposing them to the life of Christ. You got it. You got it. But you have to be willing to share it with those who come in contact with you. You won't run out. You won't run out. You can give this stuff away all day, every day. And the more you give away, the more you'll get because you'll think of new stuff to say and then you'll go to your Bible and fill up on some new stuff. You will always be replenished and you will always be better because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And every time you say the word, you hear the word. So if you're constantly saying it, you're constantly hearing and you're constantly growing and your faith is getting strong. And this is what we are about. Go into all the world and be a witness for him. This is last mandate. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel. All you have to do is like Peter and John. Walk with purpose. People will see you. And look at you with expectation. And look at you with expectation. Well, you came this morning. Did you come expect? Did you come expect? Yeah. Just going to church because it's Sunday. You know, I was brought up in a Christian home. And we got up every Sunday morning and went to church. So now I'm an old guy. I just got to get up and go to church because that's what I always done. Nothing. Nothing. I get up and go to church this morning so that I can get fed, I can get replenished. Yeah, yeah I, I slipped a little bit this week. There's a few things that I know I shouldn't have said this week. There's a couple of things that I've done that I shouldn't have done this week. You come to replenish. You come seeking Christ because you understand that you should not forsake the assembling together. Because a sibling together is where you can encourage one another. Amen. You can take and give at the same time. People see you and talk to you and take lessons from what you say to make their lives better. While you do the same thing from the people you come in contact with. Amen. But you have to have it in you yes. before it can come out of you. It has to be in you before you come out of you. So you have to believe with all your heart. Jesus is the Son of God. And then he died for you. And he rose for you. And he is now sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you. That's the God that we serve. And that is the God that we testify. Our testimony is that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that there is nothing that I can do to turn his love from me. His love is unconditional. Unconditional. Think about that. A lot of people you don't like because of something they did. It can't happen with Jesus. He looks through your faults and see you. He looks through your sin and see you. And he stands ready to forgive and forget. I will forgive them of their iniquities and their sins. I will remember no more. But there's a 
heart. You have to pray. You have to open your heart. You have to let him into your heart. And you have to be repentant. You have to be repentant. Not harden your heart, but to say that you, you are a sinner, that you have sinned when you sin. Because I don't call everybody sin. I, I got to clear that up. You know, when people say we all sinners, you know he's a sinner. Because that's what he knows. He don't know what I'm doing. Now I have sinned. Never get above that. We've all sinned and fallen short. But when we repent, he says that he will forgive us and remember it no more. So if he says that he doesn't remember it anymore, then it means it's no longer valid. I'm saying how we want to live in Christ. Because when we think we're sinners and we think we're no good, we're going to shriek back from a lot of blessings that we could give to other people. We're not going to tell them when we think, well, I can't tell them that because I've done that one myself. Well, maybe you did. You repented, so now you're clean. Remember? In Christ, all things become new. All things pass away. And everything becomes new. But you are a new creature in Christ. Don't forget it. And live by it. Because God loves you for who you are. And he asks us to love him. Reciprocate. And that's where that faith comes in. We believe that he died for us. And if he died for us, everybody knows that he loves us. Everybody knows that he loves us. So we need to start the world spinning again with what those disciples did. And that is preaching the gospel and witnessing Christ. The world is in such a condition today that we need it more than ever. More than ever. We need it now. <clears throat> so we need to practice what we preach. We need to, to put into action the lessons that we learn so that we can be what God wants us to be. <clears throat> That's the life of a Christian. And once you start doing that, you don't have to say it no more. You can just walk around confident that you are who you believe you are. I'm a Christian. I love Jesus. But you're operating. You're advertising by your action rather than spouse. Spouse. Do the word. Do the word. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. It says you deceive yourself. And everybody can find you out when you're lying. Especially if you stay around for a while. If you lie and leave, you might get away with it. Hang around for a while, you'll be fine. Amen? Amen. 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 Father, we thank you for your word, Father. We ask in the name of Jesus, Father, that you would bless us with the wisdom and the strength, Father, to walk in the way that you set out for us to go. Give us the boldness, Father, to step out in your promises and on your word. Father, we know that we are sometimes weak and frail, but we know that you are strong. So we ask, Father, for your strength to be our strength and to give it to us, Father, sometimes when we don't even ask for it. Just prop us up and help us to be what you want us to be so that we can do your will. Father, we thank you again for this opportunity to come together with people of like minds and to share your word, Father, to magnify your word and to give you the praise and glory that you so graciously deserve. So we just thank you, Father, for this time. And we ask, Father, that as we go from here today, we go in you, and that we are able to bless someone as you blessed us. Give us wisdom and understanding and help us to be good. All that we can be in you. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 This little life.